Today we're going to tie a reverse marabou. Uh, this fly was first designed by Tom Larimer, who is a noted steelhead guide out of Oregon. Uh, he guides on rivers like the um, the Chutes. Uh, he's got a website called uh, Larimer Outfitters, I believe it is. Um, or uh, I think you can find him at steelheadbum.com. Uh, uh, originally, like I said, it was tied for a, a tube, a tube fly. Um, but since a lot of us don't have the mandrels uh, necessary for tying tube flies, um, I altered it so that we could tie it on a shank. Um, I've tied them on tube flies before, and along with some other flies in a reverse style. Um, it's, it's, you can see that uh, what it does is makes these marabous really stand out, and literally. It is tied backwards, and that's why it's called the reverse tie, because you actually orient everything like so with the hook facing the other way. And then you tie it, you tie it backwards, so everything, the, the hackles are flowing backwards just like any other hackle would. Um, and then you finish up uh, with the hook down at this end. Um, and so what happens then is, as the water, as you're fishing it and the water push, pulls or pushes over the, the front of the fly, it takes these fibers and, and flows them back, but because they're reverse tied, they spring back so much easier, plus there's this nice shoulder here to keep them, to keep them up. So um, it provides a lot of profile with um, very little material. You don't have to dress this fly very heavily to get a lot of profile out of it. So uh, it's really a dandy fly for, uh, uh, say, um, clear water applications or uh, skinny water applications. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tie this on a Waddington shank. Um, if you're out buying shanks, there's some other stuff you need to be aware of. For instance, if you look at these hooks, uh, this top one here, this is the hook, the shank we're going to tie on. This is a 20 millimeter uh, Waddington shank. I don't have a package for it to show you. Um, and this is a 20 millimeter fish skull articulating shank. But you'll notice the differences in a Waddington, they give you 20 millimeters to tie on. There's 20 millimeters between the, the two eyes. On the Waddington, or on the uh, fish skull, it is 20 meters end to end. So you really only end up with about uh, 12 or 15 millimeters to um, of actual tying material or tying surface so that's something to keep in mind when you're buying these shanks you could you can easily tie them on these uh, fish skull shanks you just need to buy say a 25 or 30 millimeter um, shank that would give you the same tying surface that a Waddington does and then uh, below all of that is the uh, just a sacrificial hook it's kind of a thin wire which doesn't really matter in this application because we're going to use a stinger hook on it. So um, I don't need a lot of strength in the bend because I'm going to cut it off anyway. So this would be a good application because it's got an, a straight eye. It makes it easier to tie with to put it in the vise. So that's another thing to think about. Just look for um, a sacrificial hook that's going to have a, a shank of at least an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, uh, and that gives you um, a lot of room to play with. So, let's get something in the vise here. Let's get that shank in the vise and let's get started on this. All right, so first thing we'll do is get this and uh, put, the, we'll put the trailer wire on it. I'm gonna use uh, some 30 pound fire line uh, for my trailer wire. And then for the hook, I'm gonna use a 2557 Daiichi, size number two. That's uh, what I usually use for steelhead. Uh, the two hackles, the marabou we're going to use is a purple and a black uh, spay marabou. The flash is just this uh, blue, this nice blue flashaboo. Uh, the dubbing ball that I'm going to put in the back for a shoulder is ice dub from Hairline, chartreuse colored ice dub. And then for the body material, because I'll have some space left over for a body that'll be a, a flat diamond braid in purple. So let me get my thread started and what I first thing I want to do is just kind of close this all up. I tighten this up a little bit. There we go. All 
All right, I just need to close up this back here for the articulation hook or loop that they provide. Okay, after I cut my, my trailer wire, I double it over, I just double it in half, and I run it through the back of the hook here, like so. And then I size it so that the, the loop falls just to the bend of the hook. Like so. So I know that if I wanted to, I could I could swap the hook out. It'll be able to get this around that point. Because that's where it's going to end up when I tighten it on. So now that I've got that length figured out, I know that this needs to be about so. In that area, so that once I put this on, I'd have enough room to swap it out. See? So I can pull this up to about there. And I know that's about where I need it to be. And then I'm going to pull this hook off so that I don't tear myself up while I'm tying the rest of this fly. So I'm just going to tie this in. And then I'll, I'll double this over just to give it a little added strength. And I know there's no way that this is going to pull out. And since this is fire line, it's pretty tough braid, so you come in here with the very back of your scissors to cut it off, so you don't damage the points. Alright, once we've got that, then let's just go ahead and throw some half hitches on here, or a whip finish, more or less. So now I can take and turn this around. And you see that this is this has got an um, an up eye, so I'm going to put it in my vise, and then I'm going to loosen it and turn it, just so it's easier for me to work with. And I'll come back here, and this is where I'm going to tie in my first marabou. So I'm going to take the black one here. And uh, I'll just pull off a little bit off the bottom. And I've been asked before, why do I why do I tie marabou in at the tip versus at the at the butt section? And if you look at if you look at the stem, you see how much thicker it gets down here towards the bottom. Um, so you can see where it bends and where it doesn't. If I tied it in down here, I'd have a hell of a time trying to get it to turn. So tying it up here, I get a lot of I get a lot of flexibility for how many wraps I can get. An example of of a marabou you don't want is you can see see how little how little that is that gets so thick right in there. It's like I can't I'd only get a turn or two out of that and I'd be done, and then actually a break right there. So that's that's what you don't want. So I'll tie this in up here. Stroke these down a little bit and find a section to tie in. And I double this over just to add some strength to it. And then I'll take my scissors and I'll run it here along the stem. And it helps those fibers fold back when I'm tying. Okay, fold everything back. And we just kind of palmer it. Close turns. Stroke back, turn, stroke back, turn. That's 
probably enough there. Remember, we don't want to dress this too heavily because we're going to get a lot of profile out of it anyway. And now we'll go with some flashaboo. So I've got uh, about four or five strands here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some on top and bottom. So you see what I did is I came around my thread, right? So I'm underneath my thread, but I'm going to go all the way around. So now it's caught on the bottom. Out in the middle. And then I've got another four or five strands. And I'm going to go back in. Get these out of the way here. And I go back in. And I can just come up to the top. And I can pull everything back. And tie them all down. And then I'll just come and I'll cut them just a little bit longer than the, than the marabou. Alright, now we're ready for our purple. So, same thing, we'll come up here and fold these down and find so we get a little, a little bit on top to tie them in. And run, run the scissors along the, along the stem. And same, we just palmer it. Stroking back, tight turns. Probably not. That was a that feather was a lot fuller. Well, let me go one more. Half a turn. Clean that up like so. Okay. Now we'll go with our our dubbing. We'll just take and kind of even this stuff up. And start a little dubbing noodle. If you can just get it up here and then get it started. And it makes it a lot easier to get the rest of it. You got some marabou caught in there.
Okay. And now we'll take that braid, because I've got this space now that I can fill up for a body. If I had, if I wanted to, I could, um, I have enough space on this, with using this 20 millimeter, I could actually put a couple more marabou in here if I wanted to make a two station type fly, give an even uh, bigger profile. I would put another uh, marabou here and here, and then another dubbing ball in the back. Um, or I could, say, create a dubbing loop and get some long fibered um, ice dub uh, like that steely blue it's got pretty long fibers and I could put a um, using a dubbing loop I could make a really nice bushy ball and then and have it just kind of trail back I could tease it out with a with a brush and so that it would kind of uh, lay back here like a little veil around the trailing wire if I wanted to so there's a lot of options that you could do with this fly um, at this point and it's really versatile but we're just going to put a nice little diamond braid body on here just to give it a little flash um, as it's going through the water. Again, purple because the river I'm going to is likes purple and black stuff. Or I think they do, so that gives me confidence. And if nothing else, at least I'm fishing with confidence. Okay, now we can whip finish this. And you gotta watch this uh, trailing wire. It'll get wrapped up in your, in your thread. And I'm gonna throw a little head spin on here. Alright, so short of putting the hook back on there. That's what it is. So it'll, uh, when the water for rushes over it, it just pulls back like so. Okay, what I could do is I'll, I'm going to run a little hair dryer so you can see um, kind of what the water would do. You see the see how the, the fibers how they just pull back out. They don't totally collapse. They have a nice profile as it's running through the water. So it provides a nice little profile without a lot of material. Makes it a lot easier to cast, especially if you're fishing with a single hand rod for steelhead. And, uh, a lot of color combinations you can use on it. You can use uh, change up, use orange and red or pinks and um, you know blues. There's a, a lot of different uh, opportunity and combinations you can come up with. I mean just anything you can think of. The same with the dubbing ball back here and the body material. Um, and you can scale it down to, to fish for uh, trout too. Use a smaller marabou. Um, and a shorter shank and um, a lot of possibilities on this fly. It's really really a, a versatile design So get out there and get at them <laughs>